Good morning and welcome to Westside Baptist Church. This is Sunday School on the 8th of January, 2023. And we are in the last session of six talking about putting fear in its place. This morning, we are talking about joy in place of fear. And the scripture that we're going to look at comes from Zephaniah chapter 3, verses 9 through 20. Fear will be a thing of the past when we get to God's internal kingdom, when we get to heaven. Let us pray. Our Lord and God, we again thank you that we can look into your word. Lord, we thank you that we have looked at these six different sessions on putting fear in its place, knowing that we can look to you whenever we have fear. You are with us all the time. We have the Holy Spirit in us, Lord, to help us as we go through the ups and downs of our lives. And as we have fear, we know that we can trust in you and your word because you can't lie. Lord, so we thank you for this time and we ask the Holy Spirit to guide us as we look at your word. So, in our lives we have the testings and the trials and the ups and downs and the fears that come into our life. Zephaniah wanted the Hebrews to know that there was a time that was coming that we can look forward to, that we can trust knowing that we're going to be forever with our Lord and Savior. So he was writing and he was talking with, he was preaching to the Hebrew people uh, about the about 700 BC and this was at the time of of King Josiah and he was a good king his dad and his grandfather had been evil kings and so so Zephaniah was, he was preaching about the coming judgment and, and what would happen and how good it was for those who trusted in, in God. And so let's look at Zephaniah chapter 3 verses 9 through 13 and he wrote under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit for then will I turn to the people a pure language that they may all call upon the name of the Lord to serve him with one consent from beyond the rivers of Ethiopia my suppliants, even the daughter of my dispersed, shall bring mine offering. In that day, 
thou shalt not be ashamed for all thy doings, wherein thou hast transgressed against me. For then I will take away out of the midst of thee them that rejoice in thy pride. And thou shalt no more be haughty because of my holy mountain. I will also leave in the midst of thee an afflicted and poor people, and they shall trust in the name of the Lord. The remnant of Israel shall not do iniquity, nor speak lies, neither shall a deceitful tongue be found in their mouth. For they shall feed and lie down, and not, and none shall make them afraid. The holy mountain that he was talking about is Zion's hill, uh, where the temple was in Jerusalem. And it was a symbol of God's presence among his people. And so he had preached, uh, hoping to turn the hearts of the people back to the one true God. That was Yahweh. And so he talked about warnings, also punishment, and restoration that was going to happen and did happen there with King Josiah. <clears throat> Zephaniah spoke of God's anger and judgment against Judah and the other nations and the city of, of Jerusalem and said that because they were chasing after other gods and uh, not following the one true God, that judgment was due. And then starting with uh, where we are now, there at 3, 9 through 13, he begins to change things. He speaks of a refining fire, a righteous anger that would lead to the purification of the land and the people there. And that all of them might call upon the name of, of the Lord to serve him in one accord. He was talking about the need uh, for refinement because they were going against, against God's will. And he said that they would become shameful for their past actions but that will be removed from them. They were arrogant and they were haughty and that would also be removed and they would become humble people and not a proud group of people. Once they understood that God himself was on the throne and they needed to follow his will and act according to his words. Zephaniah said that after the refining that they would do no wrong no iniquity uh, and 
they would not speak lies or have a deceitful tongue, for they will live with and serve the God of truth. And uh, Paul talked about that in Hebrews 6, 18. Uh, here, Zephaniah says that they shall feed and lie down and none shall make them afraid. He says that they shall be like sheep. And we know something about sheep that they will not relax uh, when they are scared and they will not eat if they feel threatened. Yet here are God's people, we are his sheep, uh, who have, have been able, they were able to eat their full, uh, their fill, and they were able to rest. They do this because they rested and we should rest in the presence of our shepherd. Remember what it says in the 23rd Psalm that he is talking about his sheep and the shepherd says, this is written by David. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. That's the promises that we have. And we also note that this future kingdom that he is talking about, heaven, that I will also leave in the midst of thee an afflicted and poor people, and they shall trust in the name of the Lord. So they are not arrogant, not haughty, and they are humble, uh, and they have a need, and he will fulfill that need. So among them there is no pride, no arrogance. And because we are in need, we surely are, we need to be saved. Uh, that's what draws us to God. And we also know this verse, that he shall supply all your need according to the riches in his glory by Christ Jesus. That is Philippians 4.19. Jesus talked about the humble and their needs. He said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Matthew 5, uh, verse 3 and 5. So this is a refining type of process that we go through. And God will remove the fear from those who humbly follow him. When we bow to the right one, we do not need to fear anything else. God sits on his throne and all fear will ultimately be removed. Zephaniah goes on in 
chapter 3, verses 14 through 17, and says this, Sing, O daughter of Zion, shout, O Israel, be glad and rejoice with all the heart. O daughter of Jerusalem, the Lord hath taken away thy judgments. He hath cast out thine enemy. The King of Israel, even the Lord, is in the midst of thee. Thou shalt not see evil any more. In that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Fear thou not, and to Zion let not thine hand be slack. The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. He will save, he will rejoice over thee with joy. He will rest in his love. He will joy over thee with singing. Did we understand that God sings over us with joy? That's amazing. He is calling out here to the daughter of, of Zion, the Hebrew people, and uh, that refers to the Hebrews that followed God. Zephaniah calls us to worship with several imperatives. We are to sing for joy because of what God has done for us and that certainly calls us to express ourselves in joyful song. He wants us to shout loudly. We do at most of the athletic games, we yell and scream, but we have got a lot to shout about in the victory that God won for us through his son. And that should cause us to speak out. We should be glad and celebrate and this should come from extreme happiness and we should do this with all our heart. Heart in the Hebrew uh, refers to our will, our mind, and our intellect and our emotions. So it's safe to say that we are glad and we celebrate with all three, our mind, our will, and our emotions. We have heard this also uh, that we are to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. Matthew 22, uh, 37, which is speaking about the Hebrew Shema. And uh, our punishment has been removed. Jesus surrendered his life on the cross to pay a debt for us that we were not able to pay because of our sinfulness. So our punishment has been removed. Jesus took our punishment. Our enemy is turned back because of the work that our Lord and Savior did. No enemy will stand for Jesus must reign till he hath put all enemies under his feet. The last en enemy that shall be destroyed is death. 
1 uh, Corinthians 15, 25 through 26. The Lord is with us. Sin keeps us from a right relationship, but since Christ has dealt with our sin problem, we can stand before God free, forgiven, and unashamed. Our fear is removed. And when the sovereign, all-powerful Lord of the universe is standing on our side, we have absolutely nothing to fear in God's presence. So, to think that Almighty God would sing over a people who rejected him it is mind-boggling, but yet that is exactly what he does. He delights over us with singing, and we can rest confidently in his love and provision. Zephaniah goes on in chapter 3, verses 18 through 20, is saying this. I will gather them that are sorrowful for the solemn assembly who are of thee, to whom the reproach of it was a burden. Behold, at that time I will undo all that afflict thee, and I will save her that halteth, and gather her that was driven out, and I will get them praise and fame in every land, wherein they have been put to shame. At that time will I bring you again, even in the time that I gather you, for I will make you a name and a praise among all people of the earth. When I turn back your captivity before your eyes, saith the Lord. So, when they turned back and started to worship him in their celebrations uh, and in, in their coming uh, to the temple and to the synagogues, he was going to be there. He was going to gather them. So we understand that they were and we are going to be fully restored when we move in to heaven, his eternal kingdom. So God wanted them to see that in the future all reasons for judgment would be removed. And those who experienced the burden of sin and reproach would find relief. We can get frustrated with all the hassles of the things that we face in our life, our fears and stuff. So we know not to give up. He is living in us and we need to keep on going. We can't endure knowing that one day it will all be over and behind us and we can rest and be at peace. So let's not lose heart on our journey. We will experience eternal restoration in God's heaven when we get there. And remember what was said there in Philippians 1 through 6, 
when God starts a work in our life, we should be confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ when he comes back. So we don't have to fear because God keeps his promises, every one. He always has and always will. So we will be fully restored and fear will be no more because of what our Lord and Savior did, our King, Jesus Christ. So remember that there, fear will be a thing of the past when we get there. We need to thank him. We understand in this current world that we will have ups and downs, trials, all kinds of temptations, also tests. But we know how it's going to end, that we're going to be with him forever in heaven as long as we take him as our Savior. And then it would be good for us to memorize Psalm 1611 that says, Thou wilt show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures for everyone. And then we need to share this with others. Help others to see this same thing. Let us pray. Our Lord and God, we again want to thank you for all of the promises that you have made, that you are always always with us, Lord, and that we can look to the future, we can trust you, we know your word, Lord, help us to understand it, help us uh, to live it, and I pray this in the name of your Son, our Savior, his name is Jesus Christ. Amen.